Now, just a quick introduction to a couple of ideas. Uh, first of all, the idea of the magnitude of a vector. Okay, and we use the vector. Uh, now, these aren't 11s. These are magnitude signs. I probably should have made them look a little bit more like that, but it's like an absolute value, but we use kind of a double absolute value sign. So the magnitude of the vector 3, 7 would be what? Well, one way to measure that magnitude, one way to specify that magnitude is just using the Pythagorean theorem. Okay, the vector 3, 7 means 3 this way, 7 this way. <coughs> if we draw that in a coordinate system, it means we have a vector here that's 3 units this way and 7 units this way. I didn't do a very good job of drawing that to scale. The 7 looks not much bigger than the 3, but you understand that the Pythagorean theorem tells us that then the length of this vector is the square of this number and this number, since this has to be a right angle. Okay, these, this projection line here has to go parallel to the y-axis, so it has to be perpendicular to the x-axis. That makes this a right angle. Um, so the magnitude of the vector is square root of 49 plus 9, 7 squared plus four, 3 squared, um, and that's the square root of 58. So we say the magnitude of this vector is 3 squared plus 7 squared, square root of 58. Uh, we could calculate the magnitude of u plus v. Okay, now you're given a u and a v vector, so I'm just doing some of the calculations that were specified on your document. Okay, the magnitude of u plus v, well, u is the vector negative 2, 1, v is the vector negative 4, negative 3. Um, and I think those are supposed to be the same as these vectors, but it looks like I reversed these coordinates, but still, it's not really related to this. So I just kind of pulled out vectors that were similar to ones we were already working with. Uh, and all this says is we add these vectors because we do addition before we evaluate the magnitude, just like we would with absolute values. That we get negative 6, negative 2. Yeah, that's right. And the magnitude of that is square root of negative 6 squared, which is 36 and negative 2 squared, which is 4. 36 and 4 makes 40, and it'll be the square root of that. And of course, we put that in more standard form as 2 times the square root of 10. Magnitude of u minus v, well, we just subtract the two vectors. We get 2, 4. Um, and magnitude of that, I just stopped for a minute to check my signs here, but I think it's correct. Uh, and we get the square root of 20 which is 2 times the square root of 5. Okay. <coughs> now we define the dot product, u dot v, and I'm just putting it in words here, it's very easy, very easy to calculate if you have the coordinates of the vectors. Um, I'm just going to say it's a product of the x components plus the product of the y components. Now that's in R2. Okay, in R3, it would be the product of the x components, the product of the y components, and the product of the z components. In R4, well, you'd probably use your you'd call your components x1, x2, x3, and x4. So it would be the pro uh, product of your x1 components, your x2 components, your x3, and your x4 components. Um, the sum of those products. <coughs> so. We calculate it in any case for u dot v. Here is u, here is v. First component is negative 2, first component is negative 4, so the product of the x components in this case would be negative 2 times negative 4. Second component or the y components are 1, negative 3, so we multiply 1 by negative 3. We add those up, we get 5. Okay, that's the dot product. Now there's a lot to dot products, there's a lot about them, they're very powerful, they're very useful. We'll see some of that. There's a lot more than we're going to see, uh, but we'll get the most basic idea. Okay? Another thing I comment on is that u dot u, the vector dotted with itself, okay, is, well, the u vector is negative 2, 1. You dot that with negative 2, 1. What do you get? Well, you get 5. Negative 2 times negative 2 is 4. 1 and 1 makes 5. Um, you get 5, and it turns out that that's the square of the magnitude of u. OK? 
Okay, now we didn't calculate the magnitude of U, but uh, if we had, that's exactly what we would have gotten because the magnitude would just be uh, U being negative 2, 1, the magnitude would be negative 2 squared plus 1 squared square root thereof. Okay, Pythagorean theorem again, the magnitude of a vector with these components you can calculate is square root of 5. Okay, so that the 5 that we got here is the square root of the magnitude of the u vector. So that in any case u dot u will be the square of the magnitude of u if you use the dot product. Okay, well there's a lot more to it. There are properties of the dot product. We've looked at a couple of them. One is that we haven't actually looked at it, but it's obvious that u dot v is equal to v dot u. If you're adding the product of the x components to the product of the y components, it doesn't matter which x component is first, the product of the x components is what it is, and the same with the y components. So it's very easy to prove that u dot v equals v dot u. Uh, there are other properties. I'll, since I've got a board here and we ran out of time in class, but I'll, I'll mention another one that the magnitude of u plus v is less than or equal to the magnitude of u plus the magnitude of v. Now, with respect to dot product, that means u, dot, u plus v dot u plus v uh, is less than or equal to u dot u plus v dot v. So there are a lot of properties of that nature. Uh, another thing about, uh, well, I'm, I'm going to leave it at that. I don't have a lot more board space. There's no use in saying things I can't write down. Uh, you see what these properties are. You're going to get used to these properties, and then we're going to generalize the idea of dot product to the idea of an inner product, an inner product being any way of multiplying the two vectors that has the same properties that the dot product does. Now you've got to get familiar with the properties of the dot product. Once you're familiar with those properties and how they work out with the dot product, you can move on and talk about other what we call inner products. And that leads to norms which are equivalent to distance measurements and a lot of other things. So, uh, this is where we're headed.